let's talk about the concept of work now, because it has a lot to do with energy. Um, now, potential energy, as we've discussed in some other videos, uh, loosely speaking, might be referred to as the ability to do work. Uh, now, this is a very much a textbook definition, but we'll stick to it. But yes, this is the work that we're talking about. This work is that work. In other words, potential energy, ability to do work. So we'll see how that ties in, but that's the work we're talking about. To sort of motivate this whole thing here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down that third equation of motion that we had very early on in this video sequence here. So this is equation number three. And what I'm going to do, just for no particular reason, I'm just going to multiply the whole equation by one-half times m. Okay? So if I do that, I'll get one-half mv squared is one-half mv naught squared plus ma times delta x. That's what I'll get. Okay? So I get this final equation here. Now, if I look at it now, after doing that multiplication, isn't one-half mv squared just kinetic energy? And isn't one-half mv naught squared, say, kinetic energy, but because it's naught, it will put a little naught next to kinetic energy? So we sort of have initial or current kinetic energy. Remember, that's what the naught means. Now we have some new kinetic energy. And over here, I see an ma. An ma is always recognized as force, even though we don't really like that definition. We'll stick with it here, times delta x. So it turns out that there's an equal sign down here. If we just move the ke naught over here, we sort of get this equation which says delta ke then is f times delta x. We get a little equation like that. And that's kind of funny. And so it turns out then that, yes, this side over here, delta O is means change. And this side over here then, O is means change in kinetic energy. That's exactly what that means. And over here, this quantity, F times delta X, this is work. So there's another operational definition of work for you right there. Work is the change in kinetic energy. Or alternatively, if you can do work on something, you can change its kinetic energy. So let's just take a look at this then to see a little bit what this might mean then. Really, work can be used to change kinetic energy. Let's see about that. Let's just erase this right here, including that boring definition at the top here, and we'll just sort of rehash this result here for you. We'll set here at the top here that the change in kinetic energy is equal to work, and see if we can get a little bit of definition here about what work is, or a little bit of meaning here, and it looks like this definition of work here is something like F times delta X. So the issue before said, okay, if you do work on something, or something does work on you, you can change its kinetic energy. Let's see how that might work. About the simple example I can think of here is suppose there's a car like this going down the road and it has some speed V. I hope you'll agree then that it has some speed, say, let's say V naught even, some current speed. If it has some current speed, it'll definitely have some current kinetic energy, one half M V naught squared. Definitely has that. So the question before you then is how could we possibly change this car's kinetic energy? And suppose, for instance, we wanted to increase the car's kinetic energy. If we wanted to increase the car's kinetic energy, we would maybe, plausibly, tie a rope to the car and give it a good hard pull this way with some force F that way, maybe with a bigger truck or a motor or a jet engine or something like that. Seems like if we applied a force in this direction, we could increase the car's kinetic energy. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's not going to happen right away. The car definitely has to travel a bit, and the car is going to travel a bit because that's what the car is doing. It's definitely headed down the road here with some speed V, and so this distance right here, delta x, well, that's the distance the car is traveling while we're pulling on it with that force. Now, when it makes it to this new position over here, it used to be over here with v naught. When it makes it to this position here, it's going to have a new speed v. Why is it going to have a new speed? Because we've been pulling on it with the force. In fact, we can probably conclude then that v here is going to be greater than v naught because we've increased the speed of the car by pulling on it. And if that's true, the kinetic energy here will be one half m v squared. Not knotted anymore, not having the knotted variables anymore. Anymore. These are the current variables after that force has been applied. So see what we've done is we've increased the kinetic energy of the car by pulling on it with this force. And notice in particular here that the force is in the same direction as the displacement of the car. And so this is an example of here about how we did two things. We've increased kinetic energy by applying F over a delta x. That's what we've done. We've applied that green force. We've applied that green force up in the figure here over some red displacement, delta x, and by doing so, we increase the kinetic energy of the car. And that's exactly a direct application of the change in kinetic energy is F delta x, or just work. That's exactly what work means. But now, as you might expect or 
predict, you can also decrease the kinetic energy of the car. And the way you would decrease the kinetic energy of the car is almost the same figure here, but let's just get rid of this F here, bye bye to you. The car still has kinetic energy, one half m v naught squared, still has velocity v naught. It moves delta x down the road, so it still has velocity v and kinetic energy, one half m v squared. Those are all the same. But suppose instead of applying the force to the right, we apply the force to the left like that. That's the direction of the force that we're going to apply in the car, to the left like that. What's going to happen now? Well, if you look very carefully at this thing here, would the car speed up or slow down? In other words, the car is traveling to the right, and if we apply a leftwards force on it, I think we're going to expect the car to slow down. So we're actually going to expect then that the new V is going to be less than the V it had when it started because we're pulling on it in the opposite direction. The car is going to slow down. What that's going to mean then is that the kinetic energy is going to decrease. We're going to decrease kinetic energy. The kinetic energy it has here is going to be smaller than here, than here because V is smaller. We're going to decrease the kinetic energy. So once we end, we decrease the energy by applying an F over a delta X. We did that again, but in this case here, you notice that F here is opposite to V, exactly opposite. In fact, 180 degrees opposite. In this particular case right here, if you look at the figure one more time, we'll just rehash it right here. The velocity was this way, but the force was that way. Doesn't this look like a good way of slowing something down, pulling on it in the opposite direction it's moving in? Now, I didn't do this to sum up the last case, but in the last case here, where we increased the kinetic energy, here was the object, and the velocity was over to the right like that. Well, guess what? The force on it was also over to the right. Doesn't this look like a good way of increasing the velocity of an object? Pulling on it with a force that's in the same direction of the velocity, and that's how we increase the kinetic energy. And so, once again, this definition here, we both increased and decreased kinetic energy by applying a force over a delta x. And remember, that's exactly what work is here. Work is equal to F times delta X. So that's the way all that works out. So one last um, conclusion then on work, because there is sort of a very succinct way of thinking about it, which isn't this definition of the ability to do work and that sort of thing here, is you just take a look at work here. Work is F times delta X. The units of work are in joules. So it has the units of energy, but it is not really a type of energy itself. What work is instead... It's sort of a method of injecting or, let's say, injecting or taking energy into or from an object. This is really what work is, and we saw that in the example we just did with the car. We definitely injected energy into the car when we had the scenario where the car was like this, where the velocity was this way, and the force was this way. We definitely injected energy into it. We made an increase in the kinetic energy, didn't we? And in the similar mode, we definitely took energy from the object. In this case here, took energy from the object when the car was like this, and the speed was over this way like that. There's the velocity right there. And we applied a force in the opposite direction like that. We definitely took energy from the object here. We decreased its kinetic energy. And again, the amounts here of the inject or the taking, how much we take here, the inject or the taking, how much? How much do we take or how much do we inject? Well, that's what the work is equal to. Depends on how big a force we're able to apply and how big of a distance the object moves while we're applying that force. That's how much of the injection or taking will take place. So that's a pretty good definition and sort of conceptual overview of what work is, and that's the definition right there.